right, all right, all right. Carnivore Soldier coming at you from Austin, Texas again, where it's 99 degrees. That's right, we had another cold front come in, and it's nice 99 degrees outside. I just got back from doing some sprints up a hill. At 57 years old, I feel fantastic in the heat. I can tell you what, carnivore's no joke. I wish I would have done this when I was active duty. I would have been crushing people. Anyway, today is the launching of my new channel. Uh, it's the carnivore movie review channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to review movies, uh, mostly dealing with nutrition. And I'm going to review them from a carnivore point of view. Uh, the things I'm going to look at are, you know, is it entertaining? Is it good information? Is it something you might want to share with a friend or family? That kind of stuff. Uh, you know, is the production value good? So the first movie I chose is that sugar film because I remember when I watched it a few years back, it really impacted me. And I really started watching how much sugar I was eating. Of course, as carnivores, we know that sugar is only one of the four horsemen of the carnivore apocalypse. The four horsemen being seed oils, sugar, uh, refined wheat, and trans fats. Those are what make up nearly all of our refined foods. And they are definitely the cause of diseases of civilization uh, in the West. So this movie here is directed, written, written by, and acted in by Damon Gimeau. I know I messed his last name up, but that's the best I could do. So sorry, Damon, good movie. Anyway, so the movie is great. The, the whole idea behind the movie is he has been off sugar for years since he met his girlfriend. Uh, he committed to go off sugar when he met her because she was a healthy eater. She ate whole foods, uh, vegetables and meats, which, hey, that's that's pretty good if you're not eating refined foods. And he decided to test his body and find out what happens if he eats the average daily consumption of sugar that an Australian does. And uh, so he got a panel of blood works done. He, he uh, enlisted a group of professionals, a dietitian, doctor, you know, a blood blood guy there's all these different professionals that help him out and he decided he was going to incorporate the sugar in his diet it, it, it turns out that the average australian eats 40 tablespoons of sugar per day in their diet and that's hard to believe but it's all hidden uh in their foods and the rules he lays out for himself is he's going to work out every day just like he does now no change in that he's going to do his running his gym workout he can't eat any uh, obvious sugars. So he can't eat sodas, uh, ice cream, candies, that kind of stuff. Everything he has to eat, it has to be hidden sugars and look healthy. So it, usually he's going to pick low fat options. So anyway, he eats basically what the standard American diet is kind of, you know, yogurts and uh, he eats um, smoothies, right? He has coffees with uh, things in it, sweeteners and stuff. He has all these different things. He, you know, juice boxes or juices, bottles of juice. So that's where he's getting all his tablespoons of sugar. At first, he was kind of overwhelmed, but then he realized with his first bowl of cereal, he got nearly 20 uh, tablespoons of sugar with cereal and milk. It was crazy. So anyway, that's how it starts out. He starts, sets the rules and starts eating hidden sweets in his daily diet and makes sure he gets his 40 tablespoons per day. Meanwhile, they're doing weekly monitoring of his blood work, his liver, you know, all these different things, and, it, and they're just watching him very closely. One of the really interesting parts of the movie is when he actually travels to America and tries to maintain his 40 tablespoons of sugar diet and realizes that it's nearly impossible in America because there's so much more sugar in all of our foods. And I've traveled overseas and I've noticed that too. The ketchup tasted different. Everything tastes different overseas. And it's probably because we have the uh, extra sugar and the high fructose corn syrup in our diets that uh, increase the amount of sugar we eat, make us more addicted and more hungry all the time. That's another thing he commented on. When he was switching from a whole food diet to a carbohydrate-based diet with sugar, he was always hungry, never satiated. Does that sound very familiar to us? Of course, as carnivores, we know that's 100% fact because once we get off it, we switch back to being normal, just like he did at the end of his movie. At one point in the film, they actually show a supermarket and they talk about, well, if they took products that had sugar in them, hidden sugars or any sugars in them off the shelves, only 20% of the products would still remain in the grocery store. 
And I think if you actually added to that and took out wheats, trans fats, and seed oils, you'd probably just be left with what we eat, which is the butter, the meat, the eggs, and maybe some cheese. Uh, and that's basically all there is, and salt. And that's all there is to it. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, and that's another good conversation point you can have with family members or friends when they're watching this. That, yeah, check that out. I mean, the, everything has sugar in it, but it's not just sugar. It's the four horsemen of the carnivore apocalypse that we need to watch out for. So the production value on this movie is very good. Uh, the graphics are professional, the camera uh, angles and you know the filming, the videography is very professional. It's good, it's very good. Uh, I think some of the graphics get kind of corny and he gets a little slapstick for me, uh, but the messaging is very good. The pacing of the video is good. It's not boring. It was the, you know, the entertainment value of this movie is good. I never felt like turning it off and leaving and coming back and starting it again or watching it later. I just felt like watching it all the way through, uh, even the second time watching it. And actually in the beginning, Hugh Jackman makes a, uh, yeah, the Wolverine, he makes an appearance where he goes over the history of sugar. And it's really interesting because this, from a carnivore point of view, this totally rings true to what we believe and what we, what, what we know to be true, actually. You don't have to believe uh, that sugars, uh, you know, were introduced to our diet back in the 1800s. And over time, it, the sugar in, intake increased along. If you watch Dr. Kenobi's video, which I reviewed on another video, uh, another YouTube video, Dr. Kenobi talks about how uh, the four horsemen of the carnivore apocalypse, right? Your, your sugar, uh, your seed oils, your refined wheat, and your trans fats were introduced from the 1860s, right after the Civil War, until 1911. And then by 1911, we had all the components in place to make, you know, 90% of our processed foods that we know are driving the disease of civilization. So these foods, were in place and integrated into our diet pretty steadily. And then in 1955, something drastic happened in America. President Eisenhower actually had a heart attack. And this is covered by Hugh Jackman and uh, in, the in the video, it's really good. His heart attack raised uh, heart disease to the forefront of the medical community for concern. And actually the heart disease actually became the number one killer in America in 1933. So between 1911 and 1933, that 22 year period when they integrated all that stuff, we went from basically no one having heart attacks or heart disease to it being the number one killer in America. So by 1950, you can understand a lot of people were having heart attacks and the, there were two competing theories of what was causing the heart attack. Everyone knew it was diet. Every, all the doctors pretty much agreed it was diet. Uh, the, the difference was there was one camp saying it was fat and one camp saying it was sugar. Well, the sugar industry paid more money, bought more professionals, released more uh, studies and won the argument. And because of that, our diet in America and the Western hemisphere, the Western civilizations went low fat because that's what the experts said was good. Well, the only way to go low fat is to add trans fats and uh, sugars, at least sugars, add sugars and wheats into your food, right? So we're adding more of the four horsemen of the apocalypse into our food chain. And of course, we've seen what's happened since the 50s and the 60s and 70s and 80s, where people got sicker and sicker and sicker and fatter and fatter and fatter, you know, more diabetes, more heart disease, more cancer, not less. It's all gotten worse. And so this movie doesn't address all of those. It just addresses sugar, but it's still a very good stepping stone because it does open the eyes to, you know, if someone's not familiar with this when they watch that they're have that they'll have their eyes open if they're actually watching with an open mind because it's very apparent they actually show they demonstrate how science is being bought and paid for by interviewing a professor who's whose who's research is funded by coca-cola and funnily enough he comes out with the his results on the research is well a calorie is a calorie it doesn't matter if it's from sugar or from meat and that we know is wrong you know uh and so we can tell, you can tell that, you know, the sugar industry is paying for all these, uh, all these research papers. And then they tout the, uh, the papers once they're released. Oh, look, you know, calories are calorie. You just need to work out and eat in moderation and starve yourself, right? This is normal. So anyway, it's, I think the movie's really good. It's, um, overall entertainment value is very good. 
the information, the messaging they get across is in a clear and cogent, you know, message. It's very easy to follow. You don't have to be a scientist you can watch it and pick up what's, you know, what's going on. The changes to his body are so rapid. Now people might be shocked by that, but I think all of us that have been carnivore have experienced it in reverse in six weeks on strict carnivore. We are shocked at how much our body changes. His body went the opposite after having no sugar and eating whole foods, just eating a sugar diet. Now, including that sugar diet, there were other um, components of the four horsemen of the uh, apocalypse in there, I guarantee you. There was gonna be you know, some seed oils in those foods. There's gonna be some wheat, I mean, the cereal, right? Uh, so you know he's gonna, he's gonna be eating a lot of, but, but the, in six weeks and eight weeks, his body changes drastically. And by three months, he's having like fatty liver problems and just, I mean, all kinds of blood work problems. He's gained all this weight around his waist. It was very interesting. The good news is at the end of the movie, he switches back and they show him go through his, you know, crash, the, the sugar crash, which we've all experienced. Uh, he, he goes through a couple weeks of that. And then you can see again, his body transitions back to normal really quickly. So I, it just confirms, you know, that, Hey, what we're doing is proper, right? Cause uh, we're eating whole foods and we're just leaning you know, zero carb and going to, uh, or if you're doing keto where you're doing some light carbs and going to zero sugars, right. And, and, uh, you're going to, uh, animal fats, right. That's what we, we go towards. We don't do, you know, the, the vegetable oils and such. Uh, so anyway, it, it, it's not a complete message, but it's enough of a message where you could have a conversation with a family member after watching it with them or recommending it to them. If they are like, Hey, what are you doing? Uh, you, they can watch it. At least they'll get a partial picture and you can explain some of the missing elements. You know, you can show them the Dr. Chris Kenobi uh, video where he talks about the, the four components that were, you know, inserted into our diet that we that no human had ever eaten for millennia. And now everyone is eating in Western civilization, right? Not the Inuit, not the Maasai, not these other tribes where they don't eat this kind of food, but everywhere where we are eating this food, we're seeing the same, same problems. So it's a good feeder video to get, to get conversations going. I would definitely recommend watching this video and sharing it with friends and family. You know, if they're not going to join you in carnivore, that's fine, but at least maybe they can understand what you're doing and understand the health benefits. And, uh, in their mind, it might switch something that makes them think, okay, well, this can't be all bad. There's all these doctors doing it. There's these documentaries that explain what's going on, you know, and overall, I give this movie an A minus. I think it's got a great message. A lot of good information, credible professionals uh, being interviewed. And of course, the scientific uh, experiment he does just basically shows how it actually works on someone's body, which is amazing. And that's kind of what we experienced too, right? As you see Duke standing here, he wants, uh, he wants to be fed. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off with this. Good boy, Duke. I'm going to go ahead and sign off with this uh, first movie review. It's definitely a go. Share it, watch it, share it with your friends and family, and stay strong and drive on, people. Carnivore Soldier, out.